What, what, another Kiwi in charge of the Australian Wallaby team? Who would have ever thought that was going to happen? Well, two weeks ago, I made a video about it right here on my channel. But let's get into it. Let's talk about what this means about Joe Schmidt becoming the Australian Wallabies head coach, but also some other amigos in the mix. G'day everyone and welcome to Inside Rugby. My name is Mark and I'm a Kiwi rugby fan living in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. Well, it's happened. Australian rugby has turned the corner and they've appointed another Kiwi to take charge of the Australian Wallabies. And in this video, I want to talk about that appointment, but also a couple of other interesting appointees that I think are going to make a big difference to Rugby Australia. Now, two weeks ago, I posted that video talking about the possibility of Joe Schmidt becoming the head coach of Australia. And I don't want to say that I'm a Nostradamus or anything, but I do say that uh, there was a few things that went into my consideration before making that video. The first one is someone like Joe Schmidt with his credentials probably only wants to end up with one of the big rugby playing nations. Of course, we've seen him with the All Blacks in Ireland. And uh, as there were no other positions available within the big rugby playing nations, a position within the Australian system to me seemed to be an odds on certain for him. The other thing that uh, made me think that this was going to happen was the fact that Joe Schmidt is a Kiwi. And uh, knowing Kiwis a little bit like I do, I thought that uh, this guy loves a challenge. He wants to take on a role where it's going to challenge himself, his coaching skills, his ability to lead, and his ability to be able to turn a problem into a good thing. And there's no more bigger problem on the Australian rugby landscape as the head coaching position as there is right now. And I think Joe Schmidt's done a very smart thing in taking on this role. First of all, the length of the tenure is quite interesting. He's only in the position until the end of 2025 after the British Lions tour. And if you listen to his press conference yesterday, it was obvious that Joe Schmidt had put a lot of thought into this, in particular as to what he sees his role as the head coach. And obviously sitting down with Rugby Australia and having that conversation through the interview process, they obviously all ended up in the same position of thought, and that's why Joe Schmidt has been appointed to this particular role. And what I'm talking about in terms of what Joe Schmidt will actually bring to this role is, he's been put into this role to try and turn the Titanic around, and to try and get uh, Australian rugby, particularly the Wallabies obviously, back into the structure and the playing form that we all know that they're capable of doing. Now he's been given that tenure for two years to try and do that and I think what's actually very interesting is the other appointments that Rugby Australia have made around Joe Schmidt and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in this particular video. I've called them the three amigos and uh, obviously there has to be a Mexican flavour to that and I wanted to look at uh, how important I think the positioning of Peter Horn as the director of High Performance Rugby Australia was the appointment of David Nusifora as the advisor of the High Performance Rugby Australia unit. Now I think these three combined appointments are very very good on behalf of a Rugby Australia and it could be the first showing that they've actually turned the corner in terms of the type of personnel they want in charge and they're giving the faith to to bring Rugby Australia out of the catacomb that they're currently in and I think this is an exciting opportunity for rugby in Australia and for the Wallabies in particular. So looking at those three individuals I think they all bring the necessary kind of experience that's going to be required to be successful in this tenure. Now if we start off with Peter Horn for the last 11 years he's been working with World Rugby in a high performance position and he's done a lot of good work in that position and I think Peter Horn going to Australia to take up this role is going to add that uh, amount of structure and framework that's required within Australian rugby to be successful. To know that Peter Horn's only uh, remit is not looking after just the high performance as far as the Wallabies go. He's got the Wallaroos as well and he's got Sevens rugby in Australia as well. So he's going to be spread across those three different dynamics within the rugby system. He's also going to be working with high performance directors across Super Rugby 
in Australia so hopefully that's also going to have a positive impact on the game in Australia. So some of Peter's other significant roles have been uh, general manager for Saracens for a number of years and many would say that he did a good job there. He's also been the high performance director for Samoa Rugby so he's had an opportunity to experience rugby and the administration of rugby in the Pacific Island nations which I think is very very good experience. He's also been instrumental in Australian Canoeing Federation and also the Australian Equestrian Federation. So he's a, he's a well proven administrator in sport and uh, in the high performance area and I think this is going to be key to him being part of this Three Amigos plan to turn Australian rugby around and turn the Wallabies performance around as well so I think the appointment of Peter Horn has been a very sound one on behalf of Rugby Australia. Now I want to keep a positive spin on this because I think we all agree that we want Australia and particularly the Wallabies being very strong in the world of rugby. It's good for competition, it definitely is good for our um, neighbours down there down under to be performing at their highest level and I think by having Peter Horn and Joe Schmidt in those two positions there's as good an opportunity as Wallabies have ever had in turning this ship around. Now looking at the third piece of the puzzle we've got David Nusafura and if we go all the way back to 2002 David was appointed the head coach of the ACT Brumbies in Australia. He had immediate success and they won three titles on a row and um, what was really interesting about that was after his third title he actually got sacked <laughs> by the administration down there so even being a winner doesn't mean that you guaranteed to keep your job and in that case David didn't keep his job as the head coach of the ACT Brumbies. In his playing career David was a Wallaby hooker and uh, has experience as a player on the field and that uh, sometimes leads to a lot of compassion and uh, resilience as far as understanding what players need so he has had that experience at international level. In 2005 David became the coach of the Auckland Blues and um, it wasn't long before that team went on a losing streak and it wasn't appreciated by the fans and everybody in charge so he effectively ended up getting the sack from that particular position. In 2009 David went on to become the general manager of the Australian Rugby Union High Performance Unit and uh, took on the job of being the coach of the Australian Under 20 team and did a pretty good job with them as well. But in 2014 he made the big decision to apply for a job to go and uh, work with the Irish Rugby Union and ended up being part of a team that started to turn Ireland's rugby fortunes around. Many Irish fans that are watching this show today will agree that David was part of that team in 2014 that came together for the Irish Rugby Football Union as the high performance director and started to turn the fortunes of Irish rugby around. And of course we all know they went on to become very successful in beating the All Blacks in a series down under for the first time in the history of Ireland rugby. But on top of that they became a force to be reckoned with within the world game. And uh, along with Joe Schmidt who came into that um, team as well, David Nusafura was an instrumental part of that team. So he's had a, a really, really interesting background and journey to this role of coming back in as an advisor to the high performance unit in Australia. So there we go, we've got Joe Schmidt now, we've got Peter Horn and we've got David Nusafur in the fray within Rugby Australia. And it looks like the Rugby Australia high echelon of administrators is starting to clean the ship out a little bit and I've talked about that in previous video, how that has been absolutely needed within Rugby Australia to turn their fortunes around not just for the Australian Wallabies but for all rugby across Australia to get that game back in the public eye and to really start making a difference through the pathways for younger players to come through. So this is a really, really positive move in my mind. Now we saw the difference Joe Schmidt made when he came into that All Black coaching group along with Ian Foster and Jason Ryan and you can expect the man to have the same kind of impact coming into the Australian Wallabies unit. He's a no-nonsense man, he's going to get in there, he's going to make sure that he puts the structures in place to make a difference within the technical area of the coaching and as he's already said in the press conference one of his main aims over his tenure is to make sure that he is a mentor to coaches in Australia so they can come along and take over the reins once he moves out of this position. So 
In some ways it appears that this role is going to be a transitional role for Australian rugby. Obviously they want to turn around the fortunes of the Australian Wallabies as quickly as they can. But they want to make sure they bring somebody in with Joe Schmidt's calibre to be able to increase the opportunities of Australian coaches taking over in the future and being successful with the Wallabies. And I think that's a really good tick in the box for from Rugby Australia. As a Kiwi and a rugby fan, I'm excited about this appointment of Peter Horn, Joe Schmidt and David Nusifora. I think this is a really good move for Rugby Australia. And I know there's going to be a lot of naysayers out there that he's on a hiding to nothing. But we've only got to go back to the Robbie Deans era as the coach of the Australian Wallabies. He was in fact the longest serving coach of the Wallabies with 75 internationals under his belt. Given the tenure of Joe Schmidt for two years, he's not going to reach that mark of course. But I think he's going to be put in there with a mission to do and that's to turn this Australian Wallaby team around. And I tell you what. There's probably no other coach in world rugby today who's available to take on this role that I'd rather have in there than Joe Schmidt. Now he's not going to be the entertainer like Eddie Jones was when it comes to press conferences and if you saw his first press conference yesterday with Rugby Australia, he comes across as a very calm, peaceful character who just knows what job he's walking into and knows what he has to do and he's going to give everything he can to achieve that goal. Wouldn't it be amazing if the Wallabies came out and gave the All Blacks a hard time in the Bledisloe Cup this year? That would be something to see as well. Although I'm sure that some of my All Black brothers wouldn't like to see it go too close in that occasion. Now one of the main things that Joe Schmidt's going to need from Rugby Australia is their ongoing support in different areas. He's going to have to build a team that he trusts around him to get the job done. Obviously he's not going to be able to do this by himself. And the roles that Peter Horn and David Nusifor are going to play is going to be able to help identifying that talent and seeing whether they can bring that into the Wallabies fray and make it a sustainable model. That's going to be very interesting as they go forward. We all know that Eddie Jones spoke a lot off the record about how Rugby Australia didn't support him. Well, the time has come now for them to put their chips ahead of their mouth and to see whether or not they're going to give Joe Schmidt the level of support that he needs along with his team to be successful in this era. By the time the Wallabies get to that British Lions tour next year in Australia, I think it's going to be very, very interesting. I think if Joe Schmidt is able to bring this Wallabies team together and produce some really good rugby, then we're going to see a fantastic Lions tour in 2025 in Australia. And that's something that we should all be looking forward to as rugby fans. Now, like any coach, Joe Schmidt's come in in his first press conference and said it's going to take some time to make these changes but we all know how little time and patience rugby fans have across the world to see positive results on the field of play so Joe Schmidt there's no doubt about it he's going to have to walk that fine balance between getting results on the field and doing the work behind the scenes to make sure that this Wallabies team is going to go forward in the right direction but not only just have one-off wins to bring the Australian Wallabies back up to the level of play that we've seen in past eras that's going to be the interesting aspect of this journey so overall i'm really happy i think it's a great appointment by rugby australia joe schmidt's a fantastic individual on and off the field to play with his team i think he's going to get the respect of all the players he's involved in as well as the coaching team that he brings together around him i think that's going to be another important factor and something that eddie jones wasn't able to always do in terms of have that whole locker room on his side. I think Joe Schmidt is a very different character. So there we go. I wanted to make a video about the appointment of Joe Schmidt, but also the impact of Peter Horn and David Nusifora in this Rugby Australia structure now. I think it's a very positive thing going forward. I'd love to hear your comments. What do you think of the Joe Schmidt appointment? Those of you in Ireland that are watching this video, you've had some first-hand experience with both of these guys, David Nusifora and Joe Schmidt in terms of turning around Irish rugby. Do you think this is a good thing for Australian rugby? And do you think this is going to help the Wallabies get back on the winning track? I'd love to hear from you. And those of you watching this uh, video from Australia, what are your thoughts around this appointment? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Were you expecting the Kiwi to be appointed into this role? Or did you have someone else as your favorite for this particular role? I'd love to hear from you. Well, that's it for this video, folks. I thank you very much for watching my videos. Don't forget to leave your comments. Give that subscribe button a bit of a punishment and uh, give this video a bit of a thumbs up as well if you like my content. 
Now I'm going to be back again really soon with some more content. Of course, in the next two weeks, we're leading up to the Six Nations kicking off in Europe. That's going to be an exciting campaign. And we've got some thrilling rugby coming up this year across the whole calendar. So I'm going to be following all that. And I'm going to be giving you my reviews and analysis of all those important games that are going to be coming up this year. So make sure you stick around with me here on Inside Rugby. Okay, well, stay safe, stay well. And it's time to say adios from beautiful Cancun, Mexico. I'll see you all again soon in the next video. Until then, bye for now.